New Orleans. We find where their best pass rusher is. You guys play him. And let's make him be involved. Let's make him be active. Let's go after him in the run game and not let him play to what we think is his strength. All right? It fits our people, number one. We've got an athletic group. It was unique this year. Four of our five offensive linemen were voted into the uh, Pro Bowl game. Our left tackle, our left guard, our center, and our right guard. Our right tackle, a second-year pro, did not make it. Well, what you find out in pro football is your right tackle rarely makes it because you're, there's so much value at the left tackle position. But our right tackle was second-team all-pro. So it's a talented group up front. Our center retired, and we started thinking about these things as we've gone, and it's, it's shaping our thoughts about how we're going to do it. But it fits our people, and I put a lot of emphasis on our ability running to the shade, our center's ability to get landmark and to have range. All right? It's multiple formation driven. You can be in any formation you want to to run this with any personnel grouping. We feature it from 11 and 12 personnel that, over the course of time. All right? It's an open side run for us as well as a tight side. And I like that a lot because I don't want to do a lot of different things up front. I want to get good at something, hang our hat on it, and get it going. This was really important as we looked at it. We put the halfback in the home position. We'll run it from gun, not nearly like a lot of you guys are doing, all right? But there's a reason for it, and we'll put him in pistol. All right, so we have a variance in where we're at. I thought Ryan said something very key. We have to be conscious of where our back is in relative to tendencies that we may or may not have, all right? This number four I put up here in our philosophy and our thought, this was really critical. This, I was shaped this way. We want to minimize negative yardage runs. 2016, I had the good fortune to move to the offensive line. We finished second in the league in negative yardage runs, minimal, all right? In 2017, we were third, and we finished second in the league in rushing. And in 2018, we were third. What we're not doing is we're not setting our offense back. We're putting ourselves in a position to ball, move the ball forward. All right? We want to create explosive carries. We dropped down quite a bit this year from a year ago. A lot of it has to do with the perimeter. As we looked at it and studied it differently than a year ago. All right? When I say it dropped down, it probably dropped down about 12% for us in terms of big plays. For us, an explosive run is 10 yards and or more. All right? There was still a good number there. Repetition, and I write this up here, consistency, and next to consistency, you see it, reduce variables, improve ex execution. A simple statement, very difficult for all of us, all of us as we sit and start to think about all the different things that we can do and the complications that come with the offensive line in particular with what we're doing there. So we want to try to, to reduce those variables to improve execution. Next to that, I have in parentheses the name Jari. Many of you don't know this, but Jari Evans was a right guard for us, pro bowler. Phenomenal player, great, great person, smart. In 2016, when I go in from the tight end room into the offensive line room, he said to me, and it stayed with me, he said, Coach, you know, we do so many things on offense with so many sets and so many different things that happen. He said, rarely... When I make a mistake, do I get to fix that mistake? Because rarely we do we ever run it again from the same formation, same look. That hit me. You're on the backside of a wide B, and the angle changes because the formation changed or the motion changed. All right? So I, I'm constantly thinking about these things in terms of improving our execution. All right? Open side, I already mentioned that. We attacked their best pass rusher. Make him work, make him play the downs. As I said, I prefer to run this to the guard bubble. I think one of the first ways, I know Tim Doust is in here. He's a defensive line coach. There's many of you probably in here. What a better way to learn about offensive line play. But I do know this, that B-gap penetration, forcing the three up the field, creates problems for us. The ball cuts a little quicker than we'd like. So I prefer to, when I do my film study, when we do our film study, and we set our game plan, we're constantly thinking, how do we attack the bubble versus how we attack the three technique? Now, we run one-fourth of our run game out of this wide zone set, but I'm going to tell you another quarter of it comes from our gap schemes, and we will double the shit out of that three technique. We'll go after him, all right? 
Create aggressive help. Move the defense and make them fit it correctly. Create aggressive help, okay? So, coach read my bio. I'm at the University of Illinois, my very first tour. We get fired. I end up going to Northern Illinois University. A lot of you guys can't reference this. But I went there and I worked for a guy by the name of Joe Novak. I went back to my alma mater. Joe had taken the program over. He had gone two and nine the year prior to my arrival. And uh, I came in, we start looking at all the film, we see all the different things, we're running man schemes, we're doing a lot of different things, and we're not doing it very well. We're not, we're shorthand talent, we're going to build the program, we're going to do these things. All right? And very quickly I started thinking about how do we make our offensive line give them as much help as we possibly can. Well, Ryan just gave you a great presentation on double teams in the gap scheme. You're a right guard, right tackle, you got a three technique in front of you, you want to go after it that way. Well, let's add another dimension. Now we're getting into the zone scheme. So it's, it's guard tackle, it's tackle tight end, it's center guard, but we're creating help play side as we work. So it fit for me, and what I found out in that very first year, and this will get to it as we talk through, I came in and I turned this into one hell of an offense. We became an 0-11 football team. Didn't win a game, right, Frizz? Not one game, but we play with a lot of young kids. The very next year, we just started to inch forward and make progress. And at that point in time, we were running this wide zone. We were one yard outside the tight end. And uh, one of our coaches had a good relationship with Jim McNally at that time, who was the Giants offensive line coach. And Coach McNally just looked at a couple clips. He stopped, and he said, look, I just want to change your landmark to inside hip of the tight end. Well, we had really good runners. We found that out. A couple of them went off on to play in the NFL. But I'm telling you, that landmark changed. It changed the enti entire dynamic of this run. All right? The ninth thing I'm going to put up there is minimal calls and communication. I don't know about you. I don't know how many calls you have. We all have necessary needs to communicate. But let's not over-communicate. And let's not slow these guys down when they put their hand on the ground and got to go after people. Nothing irks my ass more than to come in the film room and turn it on and say, I didn't get the call. That's unacceptable. So let's find ways that we don't have to make a lot of communication, and away we go, all right? Okay, now, general coaching points. Just a couple things up here to get you started. The runner, his alignment is seven or seven and a half yards when he's in the home position, and that includes pistol. But I do put there ability. When I was at Northern Illinois, we had a guy by the name of Michael Turner who went on to play in the NFL for quite a while. Michael liked to be at eight. We had zero problem with him being at eight. All right? Mark Ingram for the New Orleans Saints wanted to run it at seven. Alvin Kamara likes it at seven and a half. So we put it in there and we use our discretion and we watch him and we want the landmark hit. All right, his footwork is simply drop step with the back foot, get it on the ground quick. And his point of departure or aim is the butt or ghost tight end, as you guys look at it right now. That's where he's going. So departure, butt of tight end, imaginary tight end. He's got a read element in this, all right? His first read is going to be the amount of line scrimmage, period. One, all right? And if we're running to the open side, he's then going to get to two very quickly. If we're going to the tight end side, he'll read two out. So one being the line scrimmage, two being second as you look at it, the next defender inside, all right? The next immediate defender inside to the open side, all right? For the runner now, his decision is made on three. He makes the read on three, but the cut doesn't tell, come until five. You'll see that when you watch the film, all right? When we evaluate the runner, this is just experience over time as we look at it. When he's attacking the line of departure, we don't want to see any dips or bowing. You're in the home position, you see it, the hat back starts, and what you often see is you see the hat turn to accept the ball, and what happens is he turns, he comes ever so slightly closer to, and now he's not on his line of course. So we have constantly are evaluating stripe. Where is stripe in relationship to read? No dips or bowling, all right? It's one cut now. Eliminate hesitation and stutter of feet. We don't want to see that. We want to see one step and gone, wherever that takes him. All right? And then trust and attack. Demeanor behind pads. How does the runner finish it? How do we finish it? 
when we come off the football, I thought Coach Dillon did a hell of a job talking about technique and how you build an offensive lineman. We try not to stray far from that. I thought Ryan had great examples as you look at it. Man, you are building these guys to block. You're building these guys to run and finish. All right? So trust and attack, demeanor behind packs. Our quarterback for us, he opens and or reverses. Drew reverses for us. All right? It doesn't make it right or wrong, but he reverses. He reverses to five or seven, and we don't see a lot of effort and strain to go get it. There's an element of he's going to clear himself, and then what's key of it on this is when he comes out of it, all we want is two good hard steps like he's coming out on a naked. All right? I will see this. When you guys are watching the film and he comes out of it and he ball handles it, you'll see his off hand go very tight to his chest right here. And all he's doing is minimizing the backside from seeing the football. All right? So when nakeds do come out off or keepers off of that, go. All right? And as I said, snap eyes and uh, head around three to five hard steps. He's really two to three, so. All right, our splits, when you look at the offensive line up front, we start with a foot and a half split. We're 18 inches. That's a general starting point. I will tell you this. I will game plan. We will game plan what we might do with the play side, tackle to the open side. There's times where we'll open him and go to as much as three feet and extend the defense. All right, we'll also do that in the passing game. Vertical alignment for us. Where do we put them? All right. I want the offensive line to come up, and I want the guards to put their down hand right at the top of the shoelaces of the center. What we're trying to do is create the best angle for us to come off the football and to be able to get the second step into the ground as quickly as we possibly can. So we bring him to what I consider an off position. If we take the back tip of the ball in a short yardage situation, a critical goal line situation, whatever that might be, we'd say that's on the ball. And then we may find that point where we put our hand down hand right at the midfoot of the center. We'd say that's middle. And now we're in this off the ball position. We'd also say that we'd set up there in a lot of pass pro in our setup with what we do. Now, I will say this. For our tackles, as I'm watching a lot of you guys, they're playing a two-point stance when they're in the open side. So if the tight end is in line and attached to him, you'll see the tackle with his hand on the ground. If the tackle's got no inline tight end, we open the set, what have you, if he's not there, then he'll play out of a two-point. If they're in a two-point now, all I ask the tackles to do is get their feet even with the guards. It creates a natural alignment for us, for us to go to work. Okay? All right, now, I don't have a lot of diagrams, but I think the film's going to support it. But where we have to start, and understand, these are two-man combinations to begin with, and they can become three-man combinations, but they're rare. All right, so what I want you to have a picture of right now is the right guard is uncovered and the right tackle is covered. And so the right tackle knows the play's coming to him and the guard's working with him. All right, that's what I want you to have this vision. So when I say covered working with help, that's what I'm suggesting. All right, the target for the call side tackle. This could be the tight end working with the tackle, right? This could be the guard working with the center. We all understand that. We're working with the uncovered guy. All right, so I'm covered and I'm working with help. His target is going to be the outside edge of the peck to armpit of the down defender. I am targeting the outside edge of the peck onto the armpit right now, and that's where I'm tracking, all right? My eyes go to the target, and I want to emphasize hat speed to it. Coach said it. He sees guys waddle off the ball. There's a lot of effective ways to do it. I'm not suggesting that's a bad way. I want to see our guys come off the football. I want to see them sprint and come off the ball. I want to see pad level, I want to see leverage, and I want to see a demeanor about how they're going to go approach that block and attack it. All right? First step, we call it a position step. I'm the play side tackle. Get it down to the angle of the target and gain ground. It's a position step. It's not, when I learned in, in uh, 1992, my first experience around zone football, I was talking to a guy by the name of Bob Wiley, a respected offensive line coach. He was kind enough when I was at the University of Rhode Island to take two days out of his summer vacation and come spend with me to teach me zone. I'd been a pin and pole, gap scheme guy, lead ISO. That's all I knew. I didn't know anything different. But I wanted to learn it, and he was kind enough to come. And he started talking about the combination block. And the first thing he talked about was a bucket step. 
I didn't know any better. And you know what? I, I took a connotation of a bucket step was a drop step. And when you drop step, I felt like I was working away from the line of scrimmage. And I didn't like that. And you know what? I coached it exactly that way for a year, and we were getting our ass knocked back. And I didn't like that. So I was finding better ways for me to say it. So first step was position. Get it down to the angle of the target and gain ground. Our shoe is just past his outside foot. All I'm trying to do is open this so I can get my backside leg going right through his crotch. That's all I'm trying to do. I recognize that power and force is going to be generated with my backside leg, my backside hand, my backside pad. That's the way we're going to attack and approach this thing. All right? The width of the, the defender will determine the angle. So we all get those wide fives. We've got them. They're sitting out there. How do I approach this thing? Well, the angle is going to just, just change ever so slightly to open that angle so I can get my backside foot. Here's what I see our guys do. The first thing that happens when they get a wide play guy, I don't know that you can see my feet, but the first step gets bigger, longer, and deeper. I'm not getting my second step going. That's not what I want. I want to get it down, just open it, and let's get this second step going, all right? Second step, drive backside knee through crotch of the down defender. Why do we stress that? I don't want to get flattened. Here's what happens. I open, I go too far, my feet cross, and the defender now is flattening me. I'm not getting my third step up the field. So we strive for second step to go through crotch. First step, play side, get it down. Lead, second step through the crotch target. Here we go. All right, and then the third step, and I think it's underrated in my ability to to convey this to our guys even, but you want to see good blocks, you'll see the element of the third step now moving up the field in control of the block. All right, so one is position, two through crotch, three up the field, all right? Eyes to target, that's all I talk about is let our, get our, our eyes to the target, our feet will follow. Our feet will follow. We don't always have to coach it from ground up. We can get eyes there, they'll target and go. Hand placement, backside, or inside hand through the sternum, drive it, all right? Tip of the pad, backside hand, backside shoulder, through the sternum with help, all right, as we go. And the reason we do, we aim near tip of the backside shoulder to keep our shoulders down and reduce the surface. I just, I'm in practice eight of OTA, and we got a couple young kids playing center right now. Ball gets snapped, and you know what I see? I see left hand out. I see left hand out. Well, what's exposed right now? chest. Pad surface is up. No, I don't want that. I want it in. I want it in. I don't talk a lot about play side, but I want to keep that thing down, so I talk a lot about level shoulder on takeoff, play side pad down, strike with the back tip of the pad. All right? So we aim it. All right. Uncovered, working, two combinations. All right? So I'm the uncovered player working in the combination. So this vision that the right tackle was working with the right guard, here's the right guard, he's coming into this thing, all right? I want the screws of my hat to start to the screws of that down defender's hat. That gets me on my line. That's all I'm thinking as I come out of this. What's the step in that angle? I will tell you it's determined by where your eyes are and the screws of your hat targeting the screws of his hat. We are going to key the near knee. When I come off from the guard position, I'm looking right at the near knee. I'm going to see movement first. I want to try to force their focal point lower to maintain pad level and leverage. I don't want them up, all right? I don't want them up. It's comfortable for them up there. I want them to play with leverage and going. All right, that first step, let's get it down and gain ground with it. As I just mentioned, key near, near knee. Second step now for us, this is the uncovered guy. It's contact or advance to transition. Hear me on this. Open, one, key near knee, two. I'm into action right now. If it's come to me, I've got it. If it's hanging there on the third step, I'm going to snap this thing and transition. I'm going to move the defender and transition. If I get off the second step and the five techniques worked away from me, I'm coming off a three and I'm transitioning second level. So that's all we're going to coach there as we go. So second step, contact or advance. And as I just mentioned, if we haven't made contact on two, third step is transition. If defender or color is in the strike point, snap them advance to the second level. And I think I'll have good film to show you this. 
Here's what I'd like to say. When you guys watch us snap, and it's not always 100%, but if I were the right guard uncovered and I'm working this angle and there's color hanging in there on that second step, getting to three, and no more than three, I'd like to hit him with this near hand and not bring this backhand to it because what that'll do is it'll close my shoulders off to transition to the second level as the backer comes down. All right? And then I just made a note here. If you see your guys going five steps, they've gone too far. So uncovered three steps. Listen, if there's anything here I'm not saying it's clear, ask. All right? Key coaching points. Run and block on the angles that reflect the point of attack. Do not swing or torque. Here's what I'm going to say to you. You guys see it. A guy gets started on this angle. He finds himself with more leverage than he's accustomed to, and all of a sudden his hips flip and swing. I get to that position, what I'm doing is I'm now slowing the ability for our guys to stay on the angle on the backside because I'm going to naturally pick them. And most importantly, when that happens, I'm going to flip my hips and my line of force is now not going to be in position to control the defender. All right? So, important point there. All right, point of attack. Covered working without help now. Now I don't have help. The right guard's covered. I've got a three technique, a two tech, a two eye in there, and I don't have any help coming with me from the tackle position. Nothing changes from, from target to footwork. All right, other than when I say target, now we're just going to go play side number. And backhand, rather than sternum, it's going to go to short rib area. We're going to try to violently strike it and puncture him in that area. All right? Coaching point now, as I look at this, this is important, and you're going to see this throughout. When I'm working, and I'm in this block, and I work backside hand, we want to lock this backside hand under the defender because what's invariably going to happen is I start to move, this five technique at some point is going to fall back inside to the runner. So I got backhand under lock. I start to feel the five go back in. Um, it's going to pull me back onto the block. It's going to pull me back onto the block. I'm going, to I'm going to control it just long enough to get the runner past. And I'll show you some drill that we do with that. All right. When you get to second level for us, we want to aim one man past, anticipate the junction point, all right, or contact point. And when we go to the second level, this is not for us a knockout shot. We'll have some cut blocks on the backside, but at the point of attack, when we go up to the second level, we'd like to be able to absorb the block, control, sustain, and maintain the block, all right? Okay, backside combinations. Here's what I'm talking about. I'm the left guard. I got a three technique. We're running it right. I got a three technique, okay? I got the back tackle working with me right now. All right, my first step, angle of departure, all right, to down line at play side, advance and build angle to second level, okay? What's that mean? All I'm going to do is get on this angle. I'm going to get on this angle. I'd like to be going through the heels of a shade that's to the right if I were working there. If it was a 2 I, I'd take the angle just a little more vertical as we go. All right, but here's what's really important. You're going to see this. That first step, when we gain ground, I want to see immediately this backhand come straight off the ground and create a stiff arm-like action right now. And I'm trying to hit this thing underneath the tip of his pad right now. And really what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to set the tackle's block to him. I want to see deflection and shoulder turn right now. So as we snap this, we're good. I'm bringing it on. I want full extension. I don't want the elbow to be broken. I want to feel full extension. Two things happen. I create the leverage point for the tackle, but the second thing is when I hit this thing, I'm coming off of it. It puts me on a great angle with momentum and force to go to the second level as we go. All right? So we want to displace or create shoulder turn with force, slowing the backside, create the pers or for pursuit, and then create mom momentum to our target. And then again, one man passed on the backside. One other thing that I should have noted up there, you guys are going to find this, but when you're on the backside, you're going to be behind blocks. You're going to be behind blocks, first and second level. If I'm on the second level, here's what I tell them. Man, you find the back tip of the pad, you stay on the tip of that pad and run the angle that you find him on. If you're on the first level, we can backdoor, but that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a, a block that we'll work on just as a tool to get out of problems. I'll show it to you on film. 
I just tell them, hey, with everything you got, take this thing, vice it, run it as, mo as best you can, and let's see if we can't open the seam on the back side. All right, our center guard, because I want you to hear this when I'm talking film here, our center guard combination is a stitch. The single to the center guard play side is a stitch. All of our stitches go to the mic. Center guard combinations always go to the mic. All right? Here's what we say. We're working to a three or a two technique. The guard has the landmark. What's that mean, coach? That means this. I'm the play side guard, and there's the three technique. I've got landmark. I'm going outside edge of peck to armpit. I'm the uncovered guy. I'm screws of my hat to his hat. And that's all I'm saying, all right? Stitch, this is for any time we have a two-eye inside. There's a mechanism for us to communicate, and it becomes very nonverbal. But if we were going right, we'd say stitch R. If we were going left, we'd say stitch L. All right, it's a two I. I'm the play side guard now. I'm working through armpit. I am the center now. I've got landmark. I'm going to the play side number. All right, guard tackle combination, tag. Same idea with the four I. And then we have a variance of calls here. If we ever use the tackle tight end, it's simply an E. All right, so that yeah. Here's what, here's what I want to create, all right? I want left tip of the shoulder pad right through the armpit. Second step's going right through crotch, but I'm on the angle of the armpit. And when I go, you're going to see, you want to see extension. Even at times, it feels like it's more hand that we're putting it back to than rather than through. But that's a great question right there, okay? That's how we're going to work through it. Our backside, our backside combinations, center guard combination backside A, Backside guard tackle combination B, backside tackle tight end C, and then we can create man elements of that, all right? So let's just jump into the film now and get you up here. All right, so listen, this is like us walking into the film room here, and I'm going to tell you, this is, in, this is really in no particular order other than it's early to late, and you're going to see good and bad in here, and I'm going to pretend just as if you guys are, and please ask any questions, but technically, let's, let's look at these guys and be critical, all right? So I'll just go back real quick. I just want, to, I want you to get an idea of what our alignment looks like when we, when we get over the ball. Okay, so there it is, down hand, right at the top of the shoelaces, down hand, top of the shoelaces, all right? We're running weak side zone. This is coming out of 12 personnel right now. Here's what we're going to be able to do. We're going to come up, and we're always going to mic it play side. And we want to run weak side into three counts and not four counts. Put a fourth defender unblockable. We got something else going the other way and or a throw. All right? But here we go. So this is slash for us, descriptive term. All right, now, here's what I want you to watch, starting with the right tackle. He's dropping underneath himself. He's not gaining ground with that first step, and he's lifting right now. Now, he's a 6'7 player that retired... And this was foreign to him, but he really bought into it, and he made our jobs really something. All right, now, watch the right guard. He's uncovered. He's in a tag element. Three steps, key near knee. All right, threats outside, not much threat there. One, two, three. All right, near hand on, went a little too far, and then transition. Second level, absorb to the junction point. Like to cover it play side, but block the angle you find it. I want you to watch the center now. This is, this is good center play right now. Watch his right hand, although first step's a little big, too, is on the ground right now. But watch his right hand underneath and inside right now. There is no pad surface showing right now where he's working, all right? Lock the back hand. Now watch him naturally here lose back hand and quick replace. So we want to drill, do drills that work this. So I work backside. We've lost him, just quick replace. Put it back in, put it back on right now. Now, I'm watching our left guard right now, and I'm going to say this is the first one out to shoot, and so you see failure with this backhand right now. It's not a straight-out stiff arm. You don't see it. What you see right now is you see the three technique underneath in this position with his inside hand, and he's going to make it harder for us to get to the double, and our left tackle's behind this block. All right, that being said right now, you're going to see it happen throughout we're really right now, hand off the ground, right under the 9-3, snap it, extend it, get the back guard, back tackle in, and we're rolling, all right? 
Now, you're the runner right now, okay? I'm reading one. I'm getting to two. One stays outside on my third step. I've made my read on my fifth step. I've made my decision. Now, what happened to his feet here? They stuttered. They gathered, right? We don't want that. We want it clean. You're going to see better reps as we go. All right? If I'm in your way, tell me to sit down. All right? Now, I'm watching our left tackle last right now as he's taking off on the backside. I like the angle of departure. I don't like the back guard right now the three te- on the three technique. That's all good, but I like the angle of the tackle. The only thing I'm going to say there, Ram just loses his feet right here and really ends up tripping off seven, five shoes. Okay? So not a great rep. All right, now, Ryan showed you a couple things that were counter motion, uh, turbos, uh, jet sweeps, these action. We're, we're all doing these things. Here's something that's, as we started this thing right now, 59 is where we're targeting. Left guard working with 75, okay? All right, now, obviously the motion impacted. They're in a big nickel look. He's chasing. All right, none of that matters. I want you to watch your left guard now, all right? So you'd say, why didn't he tag this? Well, relative to where the alignment of the mic is, he's inside, right? So he just simply makes a RICO call, and all we're trying to do is put the nose back onto the center and define the run lane for him. Now, I want you to watch the left tackle. All right, watch his, watch his right hand. See it out, swinging over the top? Don't like it. You can see the long arm from the defensive end right now, he's not underneath, so we don't see that. Now, I do see this, the backside B, I see the extension, I see the stiff arm, I see the three technique, shoulders turn, and I see the angle for the tackle getting back in on this, much easier and much more effective. Yes. Yes. No, we're still going to throw our back hand. But your angle of departure, so bring 58 here, move 59 there, right, Coach? All right, so here's 58 down in here, here's 59 over there. I throw this back hand on this B, but my angle of departure now is going to be right through the down, right through the shoes of the down defender starting here. And then here's another element I'm going to get to in the calls. So I talked about backside. We have an A, center guard backside. We have a B, backside guard tackle. We have a C, backside tackle tight end. There's a mechanism for us to bring all three on the backside. The center simply says A, B. The back guard's going to throw his hand as if he's providing help. It's presence. The tackle's going to say, hey, I got nothing here. I got to get my ass going. I got to go, all right? That's how he's approaching it. And the center now is bringing the back guard too. And I've got a couple reps deep into this cut up. So uh, please keep me on track time wise. Where am I right now, time wise? What? 8.45? Holy smokes. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Now, let's also evaluate our left tackle. Now, this kid plays guard and tackle. So, and I, and I love the kid. I love it. He's, he's going to be a good football player. He is a good football player. But look how big one is, and look how deep one is. You see it? Get that thing on the ground right now. It does, it's already open to where your hips are open through. So get the left shoe on the ground. Right foot's pretty good, though, going through. Now, hips and shoes are not in line. And I love the presentation that we've got two coaches that are spending time on sled. We go on the crowder every other day. And we really did, have not done that until this spring after I watched our film. I said, we're going back to it. We're going to get back to basics. We're going to learn to get our line of force to the defender. All right? A common question that people ask me when talking about this scheme is this end that's out there wide, and he's tilted, and all he's doing is penetrating. How do you handle that? Dan, what do you do? Here's what I tell him. I say, tackle. Get one down and make two quicker but you are still on the line of force. Don't change one thing. Block the line of force. Attack the line of force. Don't change one thing about what you do, but get two on the ground quicker. So really what happens is one's just short, and here comes two. And really at the end of the day, contact may be occurring on four rather than two. It may be three. It's somewhere in that area. All right? But we're going to look at that, and you'll see a couple shots here. I do think this Rico, though, 
although the left guard's hips come away from, I like the fact that right now all he's trying to do is take his outside shoulder or hand right now and just pin that, just pin that, that elbow of the defender so that he can come off and still set the block. That's a nice job off the combination. I do, again, want to say I like the back guard. And then, again, I, I'm, I'm the runner right now, so I'm ghost tight end imaginary right now, drop step, slight pivot, go, one to two quick, all right, good path. Left guard lost just a little bit of leverage, just a little bit of leverage, all right. And I'm not going to show any wide stuff. This is all going to be from the end zone, unless there's somebody that wants to see something. All right, here we go, six hole now. To your point, here's the two I in here. Wide playing jet play, all right? Get one down, target, play side number. I don't have help. We made a stitch R call right here. That's all that was said. Oh, and or they get so comfortable, all they say is R. They know it's a single. Here we go, right? No more than that. All right, now, here's what we want to see. Play side foot. Not bad by right tackle. Two, pretty good. Down, see it? Two, two, right now. All right, left hand's a little high. Misses it. Left pad's a little high. Reaches with the outside hand. Don't like it as much. All right, but what he does do is he blocks the angle he finds him. So when I, I'm looking at his line of force, and I'm watching his hips and his shoes, and I see everything on line of force, and then I go back to Coach George's uh, drill work right now, and that's what I see. All right, now I'm watching the B on the back side. Three plays away. Throw the back hand. Angle. All right, now, two I. All right, we want to go through the armpit, and in this case, with, with the backer, we end up throwing hand a little bit more, but it puts us in a position to go to and cover. All right, and then this kid's, like some of those other things, there's some talented guys out there doing some good things. All right, two eye again. All right, going left. Seven hole, here we go. All right, now. I do think this. I think this is a poor this is poor footwork by the left guard. When you watch play side foot, step underneath himself and he pulls his right shoe away. That's a big crossover right now. We want to go through armpit right now. So if I'm going to step play side, I've already got it outside. Get it up and down and drive the backside leg through on this angle relative to where we're working in combination right now. Stitch L right now. Here we go. All right, let's watch our left tackle. George, you asked this question earlier. Does it get any slower? Does it get any more controlled? There's a little heaviness to the inside half, but when you watch one, two, three to contact, I like everything about it, and I love hat placement now trying to go play side. Again, block him on the angle you find him. Now watch the left tackle's inside hand. Up and under, lock right now. Lock it, lock it, lock it. It's going to fall back inside. Didn't get it. Didn't get it. Didn't quite get pulled back on there. You can see it. Right there, you can see him on the off the jersey just a little bit. It feels like there's a little bit of uh, read out of him, isn't there? All right, here we go. So I still see, you know, again, two I. This is a bet, little better job where I see the left guard's right knee going right through contact point. Now, here's a coaching point, and I'm watching 75 right now. Let's get the right tip of the pad under, not the front tip of the pad. Strike with the front tip. I'm going to get lifted. I'm going to lose leverage. He's going to divide my leverage point. Let's get underneath it. This is a nice job here when I watch the B angle on the backside. Back to your coach, to your question, George. Watch him stiff arm straight out. Watch the momentum and force come off the second level right now to go capture back leverage. Oh, I got you. Yeah, no, we're going to, no, we don't leave our line. We don't leave our line. Yes. Question? Good. All right, two I again. I love the center's range. I love the elbow tight. I love the hat commit right now. Okay, so it's a 2-I, right? So it's a color call. He has landmark.
So he's now going play side number. Play side number. Make sense? He is working right through his armpit, backside leg through, backside pad down, on the angle, through the down guy to the backer. Does that make sense? Hey, if there's anything you're sitting looking at, ask. Don't sit there and say, ah, I've asked these questions a million times and still continue to ask. All right, good transition here when I watch the right guard and angle departure. One, two, three. On that second step right now, he's made declaration, and he's off to the transaction. All right? I'm looking at the backside right now, and here's one where I would say, based on location of backside linebacker, if he becomes an A-gap player with a shade to the front side, I would bring all three in on this right now. Center's call. A, B right now. Let's open this and get it moving. It'll bring his angle flatter, faster too, and maybe provide him just the opportunity to get there. Now, part of this is Max reaches the nose and the hip interferes with that angle and we don't get the cut. All right, let's watch the runner now. Drop step, imaginary, imaginary. I think he's a little tight here. Do you guys see it? Just a hair tight, not fatal, good decision finish the run. That's a five-yard gain right there. Here's the other thing that I'm going to say that's deceptive about this run, if you've spent time in it. These fives don't always feel like fives. Our head coach will turn around at me and go, God, what, what happened? I said, Coach, we just made five. Run it again. Run again. It's all right. Yeah. That's right. I'm, and I'll get to one. I'll get a couple of... It, I, I would tell you this, when you watch the design of the run and the way the defense fits it, it's predicated on the fact that you see the defensive end in a contained position right now to the open side, and now it's the Knicks cut inside of that. Is it B-gap, A-gap? It'll go back behind that. Every once in a while, it'll snake outside. But more often than not, this is a run that's going to hit inside, to your point. You wanted to go back one or two, to the Tampa Bay run? All right, here you go. This is what we're talking about. Okay. He's going to far hip right now, backside shoulder on the AB. Here we go, hat in front. Now, I'm suggesting this did not happen here. I'm suggesting we should have made the AB call. You're going to see that come up. Right now, you're seeing a full-on B right now with a bent arm going back to it, but not going back out of staying on the angle and running. Does that make sense? I'm going to get, that's right, that's right. You're going to see, you're going to see, at the end of the day, I'm the back tackle right now. I'm trying to get to my back pad to the inside hip, all right? And the AB system's not going to feel a lot more different other than there's probably going to be a little more depth as we climb on this. All right, this is a good look, again, going to shade with a little bit of width, no call in there. I think this is a great job by the onside guard now absorbing second level. Pad level, control. There is a little lift there, but he's not trying to knock this guy out. Behind him. No call back there, no AB system built in, fall back fall back. Is that what you're saying? If the nose were to cross his face right now and he doesn't have those two tied in, we fall back. Yep. I think this is a great sample when I watch the center right here although he loses it. Watch the back arm under for leverage right now and lock. There's just enough lift and force. All right, back guard right there. Stiff arm right now, out and through. 
I would tell you that if you went back 10 years ago, that you'd see a lot more cut on the backside from the offensive lineman, right? We're not going there. There's a variety of reasons. One, we're not cutting in practice, other than drills that we create. Two, I think these guys are all super sensitive to being fined. Three, I don't do a good enough job of demanding it. So this is the way we found our ability to control the backside and still get our work done. And it became critical for the back guard with that backhand. All right, two I. I think the right guard is a little wide right now, but not fatal. I think the angle for the uh, center is excellent. I think the B on the back side is outstanding. You're going back to your point, and you're watching the back tackle right now. He's thinking back shoulder through to inside hip. Now he finds the back tip of the pad. He didn't get there. Run the angle. Make these guys fit the defense through the scheme, all right? Let's evaluate the runner, all right? One, two, three, just a little, just a little, but decisive, decisive, great job on the backside by the back guard tackle combination, and a little sift action off of the tight end working through to the greatest threat onto the second level. All right, now, this came out of an open set. We're going nose alert here. So in our communication, we have the ability to control where we want it. We're in a two-by-two two set right now. We get a five-man box. The safety's late to come down. They're a little screwed up here. And you can just see that it's still the same thing, repetition for us, to fit, angle. I'm watching the right tackle right now. Better, left shoulder just a little lower, flatter to that angle of departure. Center on a great angle, too. Watch your center. His hips start to go just a little bit. You see it? It didn't impact us this time. Aaron Donald jumps out outside the gap on the backside, which assists. And that guy's a heck of a player. Rarely does this happen. All right? And then this one goes to the house. All right? This is exactly the same concept. All right? Not with the same result. Two technique now. Head up. Landmark still going armpit for the guard. Center coming on to it. Now, here's what we'd say, and I didn't say this in the, in the uh, uh, opening discussions of the double teams, but any time the backer gets on top of the double, on top of the double, take the double and drive it to him. Don't feel like you have to come off at any point in time. Take his shoes and put his shoes on him. Make this guy fit it. And so I like what the center and the left guard are doing here. You would say our failure right now, really, as we look at it right now, coming off of this thing right now, is just the backside unblocked and the backer falling back in quick enough, and there's the stutter of the feet. Yep, they can. That's right. You can. But I would tell you that if we get twos, we treat them like a tight three. Guards already got landmark. Here we go. So I'm watching the right tackle right now. Second step down. Lock back inside arm right now. There it is. Inside arm, lock it, lock it, stay under it. Hold them right back on. All right, one, two, three on the transition. Here we go. Uh, it it, it might have been just a smidge. Yep. Okay, here's what I would tell the back guard right now. A lot heavier with the width of 52 being in man coverage right now and or quarters off the match. No. He could be heavier. He could be heavier, right?
Yeah, I, you know, if he got another two inches, here's what I don't want him to do. I don't want him to be underneath himself behind. It's just a little bit, yes, to answer your question, you'd like to just a little more. I like the, I like the right shoe of the right tackle. I think, like George said, we could go out there a little wider because where's our help at right now? Inside, right? Use it. Stretch it. Just a hair short. Right guard. Key near knee, three up, transition. Center go get it. Be on the backside. Recognize the width of the angle to where you're going and make this a little more vertical as we go and help 74s work on the backside. We don't have to get through it. All right, here we go. This one ends up going to the tight end side, to the guard bubble. I think this is a, a good angle here. When, I, when, I, when I'm looking at, when I'm, now this is, the, the, obviously the center's throwing his hat speed here, but I like the back guard's angle. I like the back guard's angle, finding it, blocking the angle, running it by. I like the three-step transition by the right guard. One, two, three, off of it right now. Great job going to the second level. I like the runoff. I'd like to see the back tackle finish it a little better. Got a little separation, came off of it, and the center just overreaches this. But you can see Max is trying to go back on it. He just goes too far. Again, you'd say if you evaluate your, your right tackle just, just a hair short. But again, I'm not going to get overly critical because what we're going to do is we're going to get two in the ground and we're going to end up blocking the angle. We find them on, lock the inside arm, widen it, run it. It's a heck of a job of showing trust by the runner and running through it right now. Read one, get to two right now. Watch your center now with his right hand, just in, in, right there. All right, just a sample of, listen, you lose leverage. Watch your tight end on the back side here. And we teach this for all of them. Now, this is going to be outlawed in, in pro football. They're going to call it this year. And really, they made a big deal about this. All right, but what we're doing is we call it backdoor technique. So the tight end does it here. We're going to reach with our inside hand. We're beat on the backside. How do, we, how do we get to a position where we block it? We're going to reach with the near hand to the far hip. We're going to reach with the back hand, all right, to the short rib area, and we're just going to pull ourselves around the block, all right? We're just going to pull ourselves around the block. Now, here's what I'm going to say to you. Hear me on this. The minute you teach them and you work on it, and it's a, it's, it's a hell of a tool, and it's been used for a long time, but here's what you're going to say. You're going to give these guys an out. Every time it looks difficult, they're going to rely on it. Don't let them go there. I'm telling you, I had to look. There's four of them on the entire year that I could find that were worth showing because it's not what we're doing. Now, when I watch, when I watch our left tackle, here's one that I really see a big first step. Do you not? Just right back to that point of, and so one's not on the ground. He gets hit on two and gets snapped pretty good right there. I think the left guard here, when you really evaluate it, one, two, three, I think he's going four or five small right there. Now he ends up on the angle, and the wideout comes in and blocks his down safety right now as we go. Watch the B on the backside. This is better to your point on the backside relative to the width of the backer. We're a little heavier on it. You see it? Now, look, we're not going to pass one to take one. We're not going to pass one to take one, so we end up on the receiver and hit it. All right, we lose that block. Five minutes. Okay. I want to show you just a couple things that come off the three technique. All right, so we're stitching to the three now. All right, so play side guard, landmark. Here we go, center, screw the hat, to screws the hat right now. On top of the double, drive the double. Be the backside, more extension, a little bent arm right there. Great job on the backside, though, backside tackle. Way to go get it. 
Now, I will tell you, both of our guards are 328 pounds, so they're big. those guys are big guys inside. So our tackles are athletic, and our center's got some great range. But that's what you're seeing right now as you go. All right, again, to the three techniques, center guard, all right, right guard now, hat placement, through the outside edge of peck to armpit. One's big, two's not bad through. This is a nice snap off by the center right now. One, two, three, there it is. Now, the big thing here is in relative to where the mic's alignment is, you can see his near hand or his back arm right now get tied into the block, and it's just a little, a little more difficult to transition to the second level. Okay? Yeah, I do. I want to show you one other thing. All right, this comes out of right here. We got two by two, all right? We've opened it up right now. We're running out of gun. Here's the deal now as we go. We might get play side if the backside tackle has no threat to the B-gap. No three technique, no two eye, all right? No two technique in there. If there's no threat, so guard bubble on the backside and his backer is out of the box, let's go ahead and just little draw set here, influence, and try to create him where he's up the field and not flat down the line of scrimmage chasing. All right, we miss at the center position. All right, so, Herb, there is nothing different about what we're doing from gun, landmark, nothing's changing. The one challenge we have is Drew likes to play with his front foot at four and a half, so we, he has to clear and get the ball back to our runner. All right, I'm going to give you another one here. Still, still running to the ghost tight end but So I would tell you really at the end of the day, we're running to the outside leg of the tackle from that alignment in reality. But what we're telling them is ghost. Nothing's changing. Our, our, listen, number nine don't decide nothing. He's giving it to them. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. It's still coming up. It's still, the read is coming off a of three. The, the, the decision really you see happen on, or excuse me, the decision on three and the movement off of five. All right, I want to show you just a couple uh, ABs, a couple of different things that uh, you'll see in there. So you guys were asking, this comes out of the jam front. All right, so it could be any way as we described it right now, but here's what the center is saying, AB. All right, now, we get nose movement going strong right now away from. We're really running this to, it, to the tight inside surface as we look at it right now. But it's a nice angle. It's a good backhand. So backhand, but don't feel like you got anything, right? Backhand, don't feel like you got anything. Landmark. All right, just a late to get to 54. 61's got to get that responsibility going. So we come up, we see bear, we just say jam. Here we go, AB. That's the system. All right? I like the right guards lock hand. I like the right tackles lock hand. I can see both of them inside out running it with leverage. All right, one more of those. There's a couple other samples in here. All right, again, the same idea. So it's a very north-south run to your point as you look at it right now. I've got a couple things drill-wise that are behind this. Um, let's just take a look at a couple things that we're doing off of this. So this is the beginning element of it. This is off-season work for us. I'm really just working takeoff with the play side guard, play side tackle. All right, so Gilman Squares, not that I'm, I'm trying to promote them, I'm not, but we can't put a, one of our guys across from them in football school. That's one of the rules, so I have to find different ways for us to go. So all I did was put this down. Here's a good look at the first step. Here's what I like about the first step. You can see the brace, the knee inside the ankle right now, inside the shoe. Whole foot on the ground right now trying to drive off that. Drive backside knee through crotch. There is the angle. Get one down, two, two. Here we go, all right? So, all right, now, just taking the same idea, and what we've done is we've just harnessed him up, and I've harnessed up. I've taken a harness right now to him right now, all right, as we look at it, creating resistance, and really reemphasizing or emphasizing getting the backside leg through, all right? So we're going to see this as he goes. He's loaded up here loaded up just with a little less pressure and resistance on the lower than the upper. All right, here's a good look at it from, from uh, a tighter angle. All right, but you're seeing one get off 
first step down, drive the second step right now, popping up a little bit, but that's the idea, and we can see the track as we're, as we're trying to perfect our footwork and stay in rhythm as we go. All right, left tackle, one down, big with one. Drive that backside leg. This kid played in Arkansas. Pine Bluff is a good player. All right, now here, just right back to your point, just fitting, all right? We're fitting. We're in the backside of this. I've already got the second step in. I'd like it through the crotch. I want the hat placement, elbows tight, backside hand to the sternum or short rib area. And really what we're going to emphasize is starting the action with my third step up the field and then starting the movement there, driving the backside leg through. Hips come out just a little bit. But the idea of feet going. Now here's what we're doing. We're just working to escape on the second level, so just staying with it. Let him go somewhere. All right, here we go again. Same idea. Just fit, starting that mechanic. All right, here's fit lock arm. All right, so it's backside arm lock. All right, here's the defender falling back inside on the reed, putting himself back inside. This is a nice job of the center. It's the center end of our guard or tackle relative to the spot you're playing, locking that back hand. So we start on the angle. Here's the one thing I would say. These guys will start measuring this, so you got to get... You got to get the offensive lineman to get running. Get him going. Get him going. Get him going. Ah, that's a good job of falling back in. Pull myself back onto the block. Yes. Doesn't have to be. In. When I say when I say lock, it's strong and there's cloth. It's strong and there's cloth. Lock it. Lock it, all right? So I'm here. I'm not getting full extension, obviously, on that. I'm locked in this fashion. He starts to go inside. It's going to pull me back onto the block. Yeah. No. No, I tell him this. Hey, we're working lock back in, and I tell, I tell him get in the fit position, and you guys go. And defender, at some point, you just feel it. You want to jerk and replace. Fall back in. And that's why I say you have to be careful that this player doesn't start measuring it and not get going. So you got to coach the hell out of him to get running on this thing. But here's the idea again, just with that inside hand up underneath, lock it. And listen, this backside, front side. And we would say that really as we look at this run, and you guys brought the point up, where this thing's hitting, you are, you are really, if you're on the back side, you are the point of attack. You are the point of attack. The front side's a given. Let's go. We've got our tracks. We've got our targets. Shouldn't be falling on the ground and missing blocks. All right, so this is, again, just taking the guard-tackle combination. I really like the left guard, the intensity, the quickness, the suddenness coming out of this. I think the left tackle's a little late. I think somebody said it earlier. When you're doing your, your drill work, make sure you're using cadence and mix your cadences as you go. These guys got to be trained to go. So I think our left tackle's late. I like our left guard, but here's the idea of going three. One, two, three, transition. I love the brace foot. I love the transition off the back foot, and I'm driving to the second level. Okay, now just putting it together. All right, just your combinations, guard tackle combination, center guard combination, relative to and or tackle tight end. All right, here's the two I. This goes back to your point at the beginning. Hey, through armpit, backside leg through, pad level down, center go get landmark. So stitch L, if you will, working the combination to 63. Watching your drill work. I think the left foot's too big here for, for 75 right now. That's the idea, though. All right? Here's a situation where you get a guy with wit. You got a wide playing backer. We just go ahead and we make the color call, but it's going to be more hand to put us on that angle. That could be the tackle working with the tight end, all right, with a nine technique outside and a wide three. The tackle could, could cooperate with the guard. They have that ability to make that call relative to where the Sam linebacker is in the fit. All right? And then, listen, the tackles, when you get a four-eye that's playing in, and really, as you guys are looking at it, playing the B-gap heavy right now, we'd like to lead near foot right now, left shoulder under, Eliminate that step, get that first one in right now so I'm able to work through and stay on the angles we go. 
All right, I'm going to move on. All right, center guard backside, A combination. Okay, I'm going to move on. All right, uh, just worth noting. All right, so look, again, I, I can't have them over there, but that's the idea we're working the B on the backside. We're just working the mechanic and the stiff arm straight out. I don't like the right elbow being quite as wide. Get it in a little bit tighter. There it goes. And drive that inside elbow right now. But it's good extension right now, setting the block, good turn of the three. All right, then just putting it all together. All right, going the other way. Here's the AB segment now, just with movement, pulling all three in on it to the second level. All right, then the tackle tight end. All right, now, here we go, second level. Just second level blocks. So I was watching Coach as he was putting his drill work up there. And the technique and the tempo as we go up to, and then the hips being down, hitting on the rise, trying to absorb the block, accelerate my feet through. All right? And then always trying to have that guy go somewhere. There's a good look at it again as you guys are looking at it again, the same idea. All right? And then there's a cut drill that we've got here. I'll just show you one rep. So you're building, you're building the crash pad. And the idea being you're going through the, the thigh board, inside rip, eyes up through, and finish off the shield, okay? All right, guys. Uh, appreciate, I appreciate your attention and time, and uh, hopefully you got something out of that.